Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on ideal low pass filtered white noise. In simple words, I am going to discuss the effects of passing white noise through a ideal low pass filter. Please note, in my previous video, I have discussed about white noise. That video will be a prerequisite for this video. Therefore, I would highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this one. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Coming to the topic of this discussion, let us now start discussing on the ideal low pass filtered white noise. But before that, a brief introduction to white noise itself. What is white noise? A random process whose power spectral density is constant and hence independent of frequency is called white noise. We have learned from our last video that the power spectral density of white noise is equal to n0 by 2, which is a constant. Now, we say something very important, which is if the input to a filter is a white noise process, then the output of the filter is a random process, but we say it is not a white noise process. I repeat, if the input to a filter is a white noise process, then the output of filter is a random process, but it is not a white noise process. What is the reason behind such a claim? The reason is pretty simple, which is, as we previously said, the power spectral density of white noise process is n0 divided by 2 and is independent of frequency. So, if I plot the power spectral density, it would look something like this. So, it is simply a flat line with amplitude equal to n0 by 2, x axis is frequency and the range of frequency is between minus infinity to plus infinity. This is SW of f, which is a power spectral density denotion. Coming back to the second point here, we have just said if the input to a filter is a white noise with power spectral density as shown in the diagram here, then the output is a random process, but it is not a white noise process. Why? We say that because when I pass a white noise process through a filter, then the PSD of the white noise, which is at the input of the filter, will get limited to the width equal to the bandwidth of the filter and therefore it becomes band limited and hence we call the output as filtered white noise and not the white noise itself. For example, if I take the transfer characteristic of the filter as a simple low pass filter with bandwidth varying from minus b to plus b and if I pass the white noise with the power spectral density diagram as shown in the top right corner through the filter transfer characteristic as shown here then the output signal will be a random signal with a power spectral density equal to n0 by 2, but this power spectral density is now limited between minus b to plus b, which is also equal to the bandwidth of the filter itself. Therefore, this noise process is called a filtered noise and not actual white noise itself. Let us now move on to the mathematical aspects of this discussion. Let us consider an ideal low pass filter whose input is white Gaussian noise process W of t with mean equal to 0 and power spectral density equal to n0 by 2. Further, as we already discussed, let the bandwidth of the low pass filter be denoted by capital B hertz and let the amplitude response of this filter be unity within the pass band of the filter. A diagramic representation of the same is shown here. Look at the input white noise with PSD equal to N0 by 2. Output is a random noise. Let us denote it by N of t. Coming to the mathematical analysis, we know the power spectral density of white noise is equal to N0 divided by 2. Please note this is at the input of the filter. Moving on. The transfer function of the ideal low pass filter of bandwidth b hertz and amplitude response equal to unity can be given by 
h of f equals to 1 for frequencies between minus b to plus b and 0 for magnitude of frequencies greater than b. Moving on, the power spectral density of the random noise process n of t at the output of the filter can be denoted by s n of f equals magnitude square of h of f into s w of f. Let us now substitute s w of f from equation 1 and h of f from equation 2 to obtain the PSD of the random noise process at the output of the filter as s n of f equals n naught divided by 2 for frequencies between minus b to plus b and 0 for magnitude of frequencies greater than b. This equation as said represents the power spectral density of the random noise which is also called here as the filtered white noise at the output of the ideal low pass filter. Figure 1 here represents the power spectral density of the low pass filtered noise. The strength of the PSD is equal to n naught by 2 and it ranges between minus b to plus b which is equal to the bandwidth of the ideal low pass filter. Let us now move on and find the autocorrelation function for this filtered white noise. Now let us recall the property that the autocorrelation function of the output of the filter which is n of t can be obtained by taking the inverse Fourier transform of the power spectral density s n of f of the random process once again at the output of the filter. Therefore, r n of tau which is the autocorrelation function of the noise at the output of the filter is given by integral minus infinity to plus infinity s n of f which is the power spectral density of the noise process at the output of the filter multiplied by exponential of j 2 pi f tau dF. Coming back to the equation for the power spectral density at the output of the filter, we find it is equal to n naught by 2 over the frequency range minus b to plus b. Let us now substitute this to find the autocorrelation function. So, in the second step here, s n of f is replaced by n naught by 2 and exponential of j 2 pi f tau dF is retained as it is. Since n0 by 2 is constant, I am taking it outside the integral. What remains is integral minus b to plus b exponential of j 2 pi f tau df. Let us integrate it then. We know that integration of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x divided by coefficient of x. Therefore, since we are integrating with respect to f, this term would reduce to exponential of j 2 pi f tau divided by the coefficients of f in the second step which are j 2 pi tau. Then we have put the limits between minus b to plus b. Let us now apply the limits therefore in the first term exponential of j 2 pi b tau minus of exponential of since the lower limit is minus b I will obtain it as minus j 2 pi b tau denominator j 2 pi tau retained as it is. In the next step, I am going to reduce this equation into a simplified one by using the property e to the power of j theta minus e to the power of minus j theta divided by 2j is equal to sin theta. By using this equation, this part within the bracket reduces to sin 2 pi b tau divided by pi tau because j2 is part of this equation here. In the next step here, I am going to multiply and divide the RHS of the equation by b. So, what I get is n naught into b, then sin 2 pi b tau divided by 2 pi b tau. Now, we should note there is a function which is called as sinc of x and this is equal to sin pi x divided by pi x. Now, coming back to this part which is RHS of the equation, please note this is in the form of sin pi 2 b tau divided by pi into 2 b tau. So, I can reduce this part as sinc 2 b tau and I have retained n naught and b as it is. This is the final expression for the autocorrelation function of the random noise process at the output of the ideal low pass filter. 
the figure 2 here depicts the autocorrelation function of the output noise process n of t. Using this diagram, we will make a list of observations. From the diagram, we note that the maximum value of the autocorrelation function represented by R n of tau max is equal to n naught b and this occurs at tau equal to 0. And for every other value of tau, let us say equal to plus or minus n divided by 2b, where n itself takes integer values, r n of tau is equal to 0. This is a very important property of sync function, which is sync of x is equal to 1 for x equal to 0 and is 0 for x equal to plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc., etc. So, this is what we have here. R n of tau maximum is n naught b and R n of tau is equal to 0 for tau equals plus or minus n by 2 b where n itself takes integer values. Let us move on to the second observation. Since the input to the filter is a white Gaussian noise process, the filtered output also is a Gaussian process, but it is band limited by B hertz. So, the output noise process n of t is also Gaussian, but is band limited to B hertz. Therefore, if the filtered noise process n of t is sampled such that the samples are separated by exactly 1 by 2 b seconds apart, then the samples that are generated will be completely uncorrelated with each other. Further, since the process is assumed to be Gaussian, uncorrelatedness simply implies that the samples are statistically independent. So, if I take samples of this autocorrelation function, which are separated by 1 by 2 b seconds apart, then the joint probability density of these samples will be simply equal to the product of individual probability densities. Lastly, it should be noted that since the output is also Gaussian, each sample will itself be a random variable with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to n naught b. Well, with that, we come to the end of this discussion on ideal low pass filtered white noise. In my next video, I will consider a practical RC low pass filter and I will discuss the effects of passing a white noise through this practical RC low pass filter. So, stay tuned. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.